So here we go then on the uh, magical mystery tour uh, Honda's funny bearing chart thing. So uh, I have got a case. Letter C. So we go to case letter C and it says the size there which I've measured um, it then says that I need to use a blue bearing which is uh, 2.002 to 2.005 millimeters thick so uh, originally or the different color but then someone pointed out to me that I should have ordered the blue ones so uh, blue ones we have ordered now we're going to measure the blue ones so excuse me no, there we go Right, we're going to measure the blue ones. 1 1.96. 1.95. 1 1.99. Okay, let's measure another one. 1 1.95. 2.01. 2.06 let's just check for any inaccuracy no so uh, check the bag it's the same part number right now I think there's a number on the back but it's only going to be a batch number um, yeah with my eyes I'm going to have to take these outside hold on right it says uh, D8 D3 on both of those so yeah, whatever that means. But we can both see there are two different sizes. Um, uh, move back to the chart over here, love. So the chart says they should be a minimum two millimeters thick, but they're not. So that's a great start. Uh, confidence, I do not have any. Right, where's my old measuring stick? So here's an old bearing. And right away, I'm 196 on the old bearing. And uh, bear in mind that that's worn. Let's put it on the copper bit because the copper obviously is going to be thinner. 198. 198 even on a worn bit. So I am not filled with all inspiring confidence, but we're still going to go ahead and uh, put these in and see what we can find. So I've made. Uh, a tool that the bearing sits in. It's supposed to be in two halves, but uh, my engineer made me one in one bit because that's how he did it. And it sits up here. A tiny little recess. So it just sits in the mouth of the crank there, but I put a couple of slots on it to line it up with the um, little arrows here. Now the reason you've got to line the bearing up with the arrows is because your main oil feed hole there has to line up with the hole in the crankcase. That's the reason why. So uh, we're just going to fit these bearings up in this tool and then we'll have a go at wanging them in. So the process in the book says the bearing has to poke out of your starter by about four millimeters. So what I've done is I found a 38 millimeter diameter socket which happens to be a 27. I've scribed Four millimeter. Can we have close? Can we get? I've scribed a four millimeter line on it. I've also scribed the line further up here, which is how far the bearing has to sit in the casing. So the next thing we got to do now is we got to get our bearing halves lined up with the pointers on the casing, and then we've got to set the tool up to press them in. So get a bit of clean rag. So now basically. I've got my receiving cup on the back there, but it only needs to be flat on uh, insertions. And on the front side, we have the tool set up against the marks there with my 27 mil socket. And to push the bearings out, you need a 37 millimeter pusher, although you need a 38 to put them back in. The reason you need a 37, I can't show you. <laughs> 
because it's under here but under here there's a little collar and it's only 37 mil deep but if we try using the 37 to put them back in you'll mar up the side of the bearings i know that because i had a practice with the old ones so we are now going to drag those bearings back into where they belong after putting a load of lubrication on them of course right so i'm going to spanner on the back and spanner on the front and just draw these bearings in and then they need to be a set depth again to cover the uh, oil feed hole what you could do, once you've identified the, bear, uh, the, the tool you're going to use to push them back in, before you take the old ones out, you could insert the tool against the bearings where they sit and scribe a line on them, and that will give you pretty much a, a cheat on when to stop. So we're just going to keep winding this in. Right, when they're in there, take your tool off. Oops, and there's a little there's a little shard off the back there, that's why you've got to be careful. Right, what we need to inspect now. Oh hang on. Just hold that a second, assistant. I need to spin this uh, spin this around. To get the best light shot, right? So, as you will see when I found the tool, it says wiping the end off your oil, your main oil supply, look that hole there needs to be lined up, and also this distance here. It's, it's hard to look at something and. Um, that distance there needs to be right, but it pretty much corresponds to being just inside the hole. And everybody likes to be just inside the hole. Yeah, giggity. Right, so next thing is to bung the crank in. Right, let's offer the crank up. There he is, and yeah, Honda don't uh, Honda don't supply any clearances that you can measure. So although that seems like a large amount of clearance to me, I'm going by what they say in the book, and they say use the blue bearing. So that's what I've done: new crankshaft, blue bearing. Um, what more can I do? Well, actually, what I can do now is I can horse the other casing on. And, uh, so we've got both the cases on. Obviously, you need the dowels in. Um, technically, you should really crank up the casings, but... We do have a very freely rotating crank. I can't feel any massive lift in it, so we'll uh, we'll trust Honda on their um, measurements that don't comply to their charts, and uh, we'll take the crank back out, put the gearbox in, and continue with the rebuild. See you on the next bit. Cheerio now.